Hi everybody, it's Jojo, and I'm here to do a scary story time. So, this is my third scary story time of the season. Um, again, I'm burning Wicked Apple from Bath and Body Works. So, this happened in my senior year. So this happened, this story, this story happened the fall of 2009. This is my senior year. And um, every senior class goes on a camping trip. Okay, they go on a camping trip. And I don't like camping. So right off the bat, I wasn't even gonna go on this trip because I, 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 don't, like, I don't like camping. Um, look, I'm stuttering already, I can't even speak because th this story is really, this, this gets scary. Like this gets really creepy and scary. So, so, one of my classmates was telling me that his older brother last year went on this camping trip and um, he didn't have a good time. He was sleeping in his tent and he found, he, he heard noises at night, he went to go pee at one point and um, he heard like screaming coming from a distance. And, um, you know, he, he was really scared of, of, um, being on this kind of trip. So I just was like, I was like, I really, really, really don't want to do this. My friends were forcing me and my other friend who said his older brother, to, but his older brother said do not go on this kind of trip. Like that, that forest, there's something really fucking weird in that forest. Um, but they were like, you know what? They forced us. It was peer pressure. It was peer pressure. Like, this is our last year. This is our last trip. Come on. Like, let's do it. We're never going to do this again. So we went. We went. The whole class went. The whole senior class went. So, there were so many of us that they had to split us up into different, um, into different groups. So I was in the group with my friends, um, a few other people, and then um, one t a teacher. So there was a teacher at every group, chaperoning everyone. But there was one teacher on, on our chaperoning our room. And um, you know, we found a place that was probably like, I'm gonna say there was like 15 to 20 of us. Um, so there was like five people stationed at each tent. I was with my four friends. And then the other four tents were occupied by other classmates. Um, we were only staying one night, Saturday to Sunday. Um, we did the normal stuff at a camping trip, right? We um, hiked, we went sightseeing, we um, roasted marshmallows, we even told ghost stories by the open fire. <clears throat> Again, this was in the like the middle of October when you know, so it was it wasn't that cold out, but it wasn't hot either. It was like, you know, nice weather. So we we you know, it's time to go to sleep. So we went into the tent, <clears throat> me and my friends. My friend Jerry, well, he's a made up name because I don't want to use any or anyone's real names. He is the fucking like in high school he was like the one that was like the class clown, the one always getting into trouble. He was like, listen, let's like, he told us, let's go and like do our own little thing. Everyone's sleeping. Let's like go do our own thing. You know what I mean? Let's, let's have some fun. Like, let's like go sightseeing on our own. You know what I mean? Without a chaperone. And I was like, you know, I really don't want to, you know, I don't like camping. I hate the bugs. I got so many bug bites at that point. I was just like, I, I really don't want to do this. I, I just found to stay in the tent. He's like, oh come on, you pussy, blah blah blah. So peer pressure guy. And, uh, so I was like, fine. Uh, we'll we'll for like an hour, we'll do it, like the most. And then I, I, I'm not staying all night, like out. Everyone was sleeping at that point. It was like it was literally midnight at that point. So me and my four friends, we went um, out into the forest, and we were just like uh, we were just like talking, or whatever, goofing off. And we heard like footsteps. We heard like, you know when the branches break on the floor when someone steps on it? That's what we heard, like the cracking of the branches. And we were like, who's there? No one answered. 
So we were trying to look, we had the flashlight and we were trying to like, we couldn't see anything. It was like pitch dark, but we had a flashlight. And then we had um, the our phones, like our light on the phones. And we were just like, what's that? Like anyone? And um, I don't know, we were just like, I was getting really creeped out. I don't know if my other friends like peeped the scene and my other friends were like getting as creeped out as I was. But I was definitely getting like, there was like a weird energy in the forest. It was like weird. It was like, I don't know. It just, there was like a fog too coming around and like everything it was like a, like a slight fog and it was just, it looked really eerie and it just, I don't know. So we were about to walk back. We couldn't find a way back. We could not find our way back to the tents. We were lost. So we were like, what the hell? Like, how we lost? Like, what the fuck, right? I was like, why did you get us lost? I was talking to Jerry. I was screaming at Jerry at this point. I was like, why the fuck did you get us lost? Why did you get us lost? So then we heard someone screaming, like a little boy screaming. In the forest, out of the blue. And we're like, oh. we're like, there's someone. Maybe there's someone who can help us, right? So we're trying to reach out to the boy. We're like running towards the, the screaming, right? But then we're like, why are we running towards the screaming? Like, we should be running away from it. But we were like, at that point, it was our only hope because we were like, we were lost. We were getting close and closer to the screams to the point where we were literally, it sounded like the scream was coming right in our ear. Like, it, it sounded like the boy was screaming right in front of our faces, but we couldn't, there was no one there. So my friend, um, my friend Isabel, she was like, you know what, fuck this. I'm going to find my own way. And she ran off. She fucking ran away from us. And we're like, wait, wait, wait. But she ran off. We're like, I'm not, she's not, I'm not fucking doing this. I'm too scared. And she ran off. We still didn't know where the screaming boy, the noises were coming from the screaming boy. We had no idea. So then we were, we were walking and walking and walking, trying to find our way back, right? So then we saw like a light on in a cabin. And we, we found a cabin and a, and a light on. We're like, okay, so someone can help us find our way back to the camping site. As we're like going, like we're heading up to the cabin, we heard our friend Isabel screaming for help. We were like, what the fuck? So then I was about to go help her, but then my friends were like, no, let's just go inside, let's go inside and let's like, 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 let's like call like for backup or whatever. Like we had our phones, but we had no service. So we ran for like, so we ran and we knocked on the cabin door. An old man with a beard answered and, um, he was like, what do you kids want? What are you kids doing in my forest? And we were like, we got lost. We're on a camping trip and um, my friend got lost. We just heard her screaming for help and we need help. Do you have a phone that has service? And he was like, yeah. So we went into the cabin. Um, we were calling up, we called up the, um, the, the, our teacher. We called up our teacher and she was like, where are you? We're like, we're at this cabin or where? We don't know where we are. So then they, so then she was like, I'll try to find you, right? So we hung up the phone. So we're sitting in the cabin with this guy. All he has is the fire on. It's like a pitch dark cabin with the fireplace on. And we notice a picture on top of the mantle, the fireplace of a little, of, of, of a little boy. And we were like, oh my God, he's so cute. Um, where is he? Like, is, this, is that your son? He goes, yeah, um, we used to go camping here all the time. This used to, he told, he was explaining to us this used to be a, um, a, like, a summer vacation home. And we would take it every summer until one summer, his son went missing in the forest. And this happened years ago. They never found the body. And we, we were like, oh my God, like, I'm so sorry. And then he was like, yeah, I stay in this cabin now because I hear his screams. And... Every time I hear them, I'm thinking, I'm going to find him, but I never do. But there's still hope because they never found the body, so there's still hope he's out there. So I stay in this cabin waiting every night. And I was just like, we just heard screaming in the forest of a little boy, but we didn't see anybody. We didn't know who it was. And he goes, that was probably my son. I don't know where he is. I don't know if he's underground, captive. I was like, when did this happen? He goes, this happened... Eight years ago. I'm like, well, how old was he? He was 10. I'm like, but he would be 18 now. And he goes, I know. But I, 
he doesn't sound 18, I told him. But I'm like, yeah, he doesn't sound 18. He sounds like he was when he was 10. It's like he never aged. It's like his voice never aged or he just never aged or I don't know. I'm like, do you think that he's dead and there's a, and he's a, I mean, it's unbelievable to say, but I was like, do you think he's dead and do you think there's like a ghost of him haunting the forest? He's like, oh, that's a bunch of bullshit. He told me, don't fucking talk like that. That, 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 that I don't want to hear that shit. You know what I mean? I was just like, no, it's okay. I'm sorry. I, I just didn't, I just don't understand how we're hearing this boy screaming and you're saying that it's your son. 10, 10, uh, eight years ago, and he'd be 18 now. It doesn't make any sense. Um, and if they haven't found the body yet, they're, they're not going to find the body. I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, I don't like saying that, but I mean, it, it just the cruel, believe it, it's just the cruel, like, honesty of it. And he just like, you know what? That's fucking bullshit. And then he took an axe. And then he took like a piece of wood and he started chomping on the wood aggressively in front of us. He's like, no, my son's alive. I know he is. And he started chomping on the wood so loud and so aggressive. We were like, we got so afraid. We were like, we were like frozen in shock. He's like, my son's out there. I know he's out there. I don't care how old he is or how long I have to wait. He's out there. And we were just like, okay. We didn't know what to think. We were like startled. We were like, oh my fucking God. We were like... We don't know if, like, he was making it up or if, like, he was killing kids or if he was, or if, like, maybe the boy we heard was someone he was torturing. Like, we don't know. We didn't know anything. Like, we were just, like, we were just making assumptions. We had no idea. Um, then all of a sudden, there was knocks on the door. It was our teacher. Thank God she found us. We left just in the nick of time because that, that shit was scary. me. Even when the teacher came to get us, she was like, she saw him with the axe, with the cut it, cutting off the wood, and we, she was like, yeah, let's go. We went back to the camping site, but still, where was our friend Isabel? We couldn't, we, we didn't find her. She, my teacher was like, oh, she's probably back at the camping site. We went back to the camping site, she wasn't there. The whole night we went searching for her. We could not find our friend Isabel worth a damn. The next day, and days passed, you know, um... We thought maybe she, she found her way back home and she left the camping trip. Parents never heard of her. Parents said she never came home. Um, still to this day, that was like, what, 11 years ago? Isabel, that was the last time we saw her was that night in the forest. Her body never showed up. She just like disappeared. She completely disappeared. They fired the teacher who chaperoned us because they had no choice. Because um, she was the one chaperoning. She was the one responsible. So they had no choice but to fire her. They never took the camping trip again. They never took, the senior camping trip stopped that year. They were like, we're not doing this again. And that was the end of that. So, yeah, that's the story. And, um, you know, I still hear of the forest and I still hear stories of how <clears throat> people go camping there and they could still hear the little boy screaming and they can still hear this girl, this 17-year-old girl, who could be my friend Isabel, screaming and screaming for help. But they don't see anyone. It's like just a voice in the forest. There's no one there. So, yeah. So that's the story. Um, needless to say... I never gone camping again, even though I never wanted to go camping. That was the fucking horrible, worst camping trip I ever could think of taking. <clears throat> so yeah, I love you guys. I hope you guys enjoy the scary story time. <clears throat> Let me know if you guys take any camping trips at school. <clears throat> I know it's probably nothing like this, because, girl. But yeah, um, it was really scary. It was really frightening. I don't know if that old man is still in that forest. I don't know if he's still alive. I don't know what it is. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I love you guys. And I um, hope you guys en have been enjoying these scary story times in the month of October. And um, Halloween, the new Halloween movie just came out on Peacock. And I've not seen it yet, so I'm going to watch it later tonight. I baked some Halloween sugar cookies um, from Pillsbury with the pumpkins on them. And I have this new cute little Halloween pumpkin mug. and put my, my tea in and watch that Halloween movie. And I can't wait. Alright, I love you guys so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!